So, what happens to your books nowadays since so many people are buying Kindle? How does that affect you personally? Do you know, it doesn't affect me personally at all. I, in terms of what I see as, as a royalty, I get about the same amount from a Kindle, from an e-book download, as I do from uh, the sale of one of my, uh, what they call, legacy published books. And my feeling about all of the e-book thing is this. It's got everybody up. You know, that's the thing that New York is so crazy about these days. Where is all of this going? My feeling is simply this. I don't care how my work gets into a reader's hands as long as it does. And I know there's a whole generation coming up for whom looking at a small screen is the way they get most of their information. And if that's, if they're more comfortable reading my book on a Kindle or a Nook or a Sony e-reader, more power to them, as long as they're reading my book. So I'm trying to look at it as augmenting what else is already out there. So in the same way that audiobooks, when they became available, allowed people to read and to, to come to the work in, in, in a different way and for different reasons. I don't know about you guys, when I took a long trip, I'm always listening to an audio book. So I'm hoping that, that this whole digital thing works out that way. One more question and then we'll call it. Two more questions and then we'll call it. Yeah. Do you get a say in which actor plays your main character? Do I get a say in which actor plays my main character? Well, first of all, there's got to be a movie. Yeah. Uh, and do you guys want to hear my Hollywood story? Yes. Uh, I love telling this story. It's so sad. <laughs> when Iron Lake came out, I got a call from a Hollywood producer, a guy who was associated with Ray Stark Productions. These are the people who brought us Funny Girl and, uh, and The Way We Were, among other things. He said, oh, I love your book, love your book. I want to make a big movie out of it. Will you come out and talk to me? So they flew my wife and me out to Hollywood. Now, this was a guy who probably at one point in time was a pretty nice guy, but he'd been in Hollywood for a while. And, uh, and he was in his 40s, which is old for Hollywood, and he'd, he'd never had a major hit, and desperation just poured off this guy. He was really uncomfortable to be around. So we did a tour of the studio, and he talked to us, and then my wife and I went back to the hotel where they were putting us up. That evening, we went down to the hotel bar for a drink. The woman who served us our cocktails was, I kid you not, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. She was an actress. She'd come to Hollywood to be in films and all she'd ever done was serve cocktails. My wife couldn't keep her eyes off the bartender. That guy was a hunk. He was an actor. He'd come to Hollywood to be in films and all he'd ever done was mixed drinks. So when we left it was with that sense that probably a lot of us have about Hollywood that it's a place of broken dreams and I didn't want to have anything to do with it. We didn't do the deal. Next year, Boundary Waters, my second book comes out. We get a call from Hollywood. It's a different production company. This is a uh, company called Shut Jones Production. It was owned by two women, Kathy Jones and, swear to God, Buffy Shut. In Hollywood, there really are people named Buffy. They said, we love your book. Will you come out and talk to us? Uh, we want to make a movie. So I flew out there. They turned out to be so nice they could have been Midwestern. <laughs> and uh, so I, they optioned Iron Lake and they optioned Boundary Waters. Now, they were going to try to sell Iron Lake first. And what they did was they hired a guy to do a treatment for Iron Lake. You don't shop around the book. You don't shop around a script. In Hollywood, you shop around a treatment. So they shopped this treatment around. And it went to Sony, TriStar, and MGM, and Fox, and Universal, all the big studios. It took a very long period of time, but nobody bought. And at the end of that period, Kathy and, and, and Buffy came to me and they said, well, apparently... Indians aren't quite right for the big screen. What we're going to do is we're going to make a made-for-television movie out of it. So they hired a guy to do the treatment for that, and they shopped it around to HBO and Cinemax and Showtime. And I think they went all the way down to the Hallmark Channel, and nobody bought. At the end of that very long period, they came to me and they said, well, apparently Indians aren't quite right for a made-for-television movie. What we're going to do is we're going to make a television series out of it. So they hired a guy to do the treatment for the television series. And it happened to be a guy I know, a guy named Lee Goldberg, who's been around Hollywood a very long time. And I get a call from Lee one day, and he says, oh, my God, Jen, you've got to see what they want me to do to your book. So he sent me a copy of the treatment they were having him prepare for Iron Lake. And as nearly as I could tell, 
Indians weren't quite right for a television series either, because there was no longer an Ojibwe element to it. The court was no longer of mixed heritage. It didn't even take place in Minnesota. As nearly as I could tell, it was Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> it was so bizarre. They shopped that around and nobody bought it, and, uh, and at the end of that period we let the option lapse. Now an option is simply a, a deal that you make with the publishing, or with the uh, production company, which gives them the right, during a particular period of time, usually it's a year, it can be extended, to try to make a movie, and in that period of time you won't, you promise not to talk to any other production companies about the work. So, Cork was dead in Hollywood. <laughs> and then, just as Vermilion Drift was about to come out, we started getting calls from Hollywood. And the most significant of the calls at this point was a call from a guy named William Peterson. Do you guys know the old CSI? Yeah. William Peterson headed up the CSI cast. William Peterson, he actually sent me an email. And he said, I'm just wondering if the rights, the film rights to Vermilion Drift are available. And I'm going, woohoo! Um, but very professionally directed him to my agent who handles these things. And about 15 minutes later, I get another email from him that says, uh, and by the way, I'm wondering if the rights to Iron Lake are also available. If you, if you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of your work. I would like to be Port Wakanda. So, uh, my agent took it from there, and she was in touch with him and uh, said, okay, shoot us an offer, and we can begin to work. He shot her an offer, and she called me up, and she said, you know, Kent, this is the most ridiculous offer I've ever seen, but this is Hollywood. It's a starting place. I'll send back a counter offer, and we'll begin the work. She sent it back a counter offer. I got a call from her that afternoon, and she said, well, Kent, William Peterson has decided he doesn't want to be Corkrock. <laughs> so he's out of the picture. When I first began to write the series, this was back in 1992, I was thinking of a guy named Sam Shepard. When I envisioned, oh, yeah. because I, in my vision, Cork's only one quarter Ojibwe, he's three quarters Irish. I was looking at a guy who was more white looking than he was Ojibwe. And I wanted somebody who was, generally speaking, not the kind of guy you would turn your head if you were a woman, on the street to look at, just an ordinary kind of a looking guy, but when you knew him, you knew he was the kind of guy you could trust. And Sam Shepard always struck me that way, and I thought, well, if we got Sam Shepard on board, we could get Jessica Lange to <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen. Uh, so at this point, if, I, if there's a movie made, God only knows. I think, you know, it takes forever for a movie to get made, so I'm thinking we should begin by thinking Justin Bieber at this point. <laughs> <laughs> be old enough by the time. <laughs> And one more question. Well, it concerned the Hollywood connection, so we don't have to go into that anymore. <laughs> okay. Folks, thank you so much for turning out. This <laughs> and if, if I haven't, if you haven't, if you've got books that I haven't signed or want to.